Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, May 2nd, 2023 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Today we got a diary from Jan looking into what he calls passive analysis of obfuscated phishing emails. Typically when analyzing malware, you sort of have two options. You can just do a dynamic analysis where you run the malware and see what it does, which often tends to be the faster way of doing it if you have a lab set up for it, but it has the risk of tipping off the attacker because often you need to allow the malware to interact with the attacker's infrastructure to really see what's happening. The other option, of course, is static analysis, where you are analyzing the source code. This has the advantage of not actually running the code. Of course, in this case, there is no interaction with the attacker's infrastructure, but it tends to be tedious and slow. So passive analysis is something that Jan uses specifically for JavaScript and phishing emails, where what he does is he basically modifies the obfuscated JavaScript to print itself into the browser windows by adding a document right around the JavaScript. This has the advantage of basically allowing the JavaScript to decode itself and not completely running the JavaScript. Of course, there is still a risk that you're interacting with the attacker's infrastructure, but it's kind of more a balanced method of having something that's reasonably safe, but still much faster than doing the static approach. And Apple today for the first time used its rapid security response feature. This is a feature that was included in the latest iOS and macOS update. And what it allows Apple to do is to release smaller incremental updates to fix specific security issues without actually needing to download a complete image. In the past, one of the issues here was that Apple always downloaded a complete operating system image, no matter how small they change it. So it could verify the signature of that image and then essentially just swap old for new image. However, that led to very large downloads and also long times to actually have a device updated. This new rapid security response feature is promising to fix this problem. And in my limited testing here with one iPhone and one Mac OS device, it certainly did go a lot faster. You still had to reboot your device after you were done downloading. Some users appear to have a less optimal experience uh, with this update where essentially the server wasn't able to respond to the request to verify the update, which then led to a failed uh, update process. After you applied the update, your OS version number now has the letter A appended to it. This is also different from uh, prior Mac OS and iOS behavior. You always had uh, three numbers separated with a dot. Well, now you got the letter A at the end. Hope We'll see if this causes any problems for systems that, for example, attempt to automatically figure out an operating system version. The other issue here, and that's, I think, really the big issue with this update, there's absolutely no word from Apple what it actually fixes here with this update. By reverse engineering part of the update, some users figured out that this update will be rolled out over the next two days, which I believe is significantly faster than what Apple did with some of the full-fledged operating system updates. And then in updates today, we got an update for Grafana, the data visualization tool. Two vulnerabilities are being fixed here. One is a denial of service vulnerability. If you use SAML authentication, you can pass an infinitely long string, which will then just crash the system. The other one is related to JWT authentication. If you're using JSON web tokens, there is a possibility that they will be exposed on the URL instead of just as a header, which then of course could leak that sensitive information. 
And then we have a little bit more of a curiosity than sort of an important vulnerability, in my opinion, because uh, probably not too many of the listeners here are using Illumina DNA sequencing equipment. This equipment has a number of vulnerabilities that allow complete takeover of the device remotely. There are a number of models affected and it could be used to essentially alter the output of the DNA sequencing analysis and affect the diagnosis of patients who use or whose DNA is being analyzed using these machines to diagnose diseases. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.